Hello and a big welcome to West Country Wanderings for one of my monthly vlogs. It's the monthly vlog for February 2023, number 19 in the series. This is a rather special one because I'm celebrating my second year on YouTube. I can't believe it was two years ago I made that very first video down in Dartmouth in South Devon. I'll tell you a little bit more about that and how that came about and how I started my YouTube journey later in today's vlog. But first of all, I'll tell you where we are in beautiful Herefordshire countryside. I'm actually in the northwestern corner of Herefordshire today. I'm near the village of Wigmore. And today's vlog, I will actually film it in and around the ruins of Wigmore Castle. How about that? So I hope you can join me for a tour here, Wigmore Castle in Herefordshire, having a look back at the month of February, the highlights of it, and some of your best comments too that you've written on the channel here on West Country Wanderings. So why not join me here at Wigmore in Herefordshire? Now, before I tell you about the history of this wonderful ruined castle here in Herefordshire, I, and also before I tell you about the first video that landed on my channel for the month of February, I'll just tell you a little bit more about where we are. We're about 10 miles, just kind of the north of the Herefordshire town of Lempster, somewhere we will visit on a future video here on West Country Wanderings. We're also not far from what are called the Black and White Villages. There's like a loop of them you can go around Probably the most famous one is the village of Erdisland, not that far from here, about six or seven miles. We're some miles west, due west of the north of Worcestershire town of Tenbury Wells. Also plan to visit that and we're not that far from the Shropshire border. We're only about 10 miles to the south of the wonderful town of Ludlow, which is obviously just outside of the uh, West Country Wanderings area. So that's Wigmore Parish Church just down there. I'll tell you some more about the village and the castle in a bit. First of all, I'll tell you about the first video that landed on my channel for the month of February. Now, the first video to land on my channel for the month of February was actually the second most popular viewed video. It had like some 750 views, which I'm really, really pleased with. And it was a trip down to the county of Dorset. Now, before I mention any more, apologies, because I haven't actually done that much from the further part of the southwest from Devon and Cornwall counties and I hope to be putting that right very very soon. I've got some family business to attend to this coming week and also got some editing to catch up on so there will be other videos landing but I'm hoping to have a trip down to Devon to walk along the Jurassic coat from Exmouth so that's a plan for March. I digress, back to Lyme Regis. I love Lyme Regis. I think it's an absolutely fabulous little town on the coast there. Of course, it's right at the heart of the Jurassic coast. And in that video, I told you some of the history of the fossil findings in that, in that area as, as well. Uh, of course, we, we, we spoke about uh, Mary Anning, of course, and her discoveries with her brother, as I said, who often doesn't get mentioned. So he's got another mention again now, so I included some clips of that. Anyway, the top comment for that video is from a gentleman called Des Byrne. So I'll just read you now what he said about that video, because it has a personal connection for him. Paul, the light was perfect for lighting up the cliff face. Yes, we had the, the sun came out and the, it just seemed to be at the right angle to give you the contours of uh, all those various layers of clay and shale. This area has lots of happy memories for me. Almost 20 years ago, my late wife's grandmother lived close by in Bempster. I can recommend a walk up Golden Cap. Incredible views on a sunny day. Thank you very much for that, Des, and your personal recollections from it too. Yeah, that's another place we'll probably visit. You've got West Bay, Bridport, which is like the inland town version of West Bay, and Golden Cap, which is a natural trust, kind of Heathland, I think it is, on the top there. And it goes to one of the highest points along that stretch of the Jurassic Coast, and you've got all these wonderful views to dip down. So that's somewhere we'll be coming to on a future video here on West Country Wanderings. So before I tell you some more about the castle and also the videos that appeared on the channel, I'll just tell you a little bit about this really interesting village. And from my notes 
research just before I'd done this monthly vlog, it seems as a connection to Old English and it actually goes back to Wicker Moor, that's W-I-C-G-A hyphen M-O-R. And that relates to the word inset, the W-I-C-G-A bit meaning insects. And they think, the historians that is, that that refers to a high yielding moorland. There is a lot of moorland and heathland surrounding the base of the castle here. And they're thinking that because of the fertile nature of the soil, obviously this is still a highly agricultural county, that that's where the name Wigmore comes from. Now, prior to the castle being built, and I'll tell you the date and who did all that shortly, there was a much older pre-Roman settlement here, possibly Iron Age, on one of the neighbouring hills, not the hill that Wigmore Castle stands on, but the one of the ones around here because artefacts and very pieces of bakeware sort of thing were, were found in this, this area and also some tools as well. So that's where it started. And the, th the historians think that, that little settlement was called not Wigmore, Wigma from the insect I was talking about earlier, but it was actually called Mearstone. At the time of Edward the Confessor, this land around here belonged to the Earl of Shrewsbury, one Edric Sylvaticus. And he owned all of the lands in this area, and in fact, a lot of what is known as the Welsh Marches, the borderlands in the far western section of England, where it borders Wales, of course, and we've come across some of that as we were passing through the Seven Way, more of which a bit on that shortly. Now, the Earl of Shrewsbury's estate was passed on to one William Fitz Osborne. He, from Hereford, and we've come across this gentleman before and he actually had this castle here built in the Norman period. Now the ruins that you see today of the castle aren't William Fitz Osborne's original castle because that was built of timber. Because it was built of timber it soon decayed. I'll tell you more about the ruins that you do see here shortly but yes it is a fabulous site and you can see because it holds a commanding view from here in all directions you can see why the castle was built at this point here and we'll go further up to the top to the the keep later in today's video. So before I tell you about the next video that landed on my channel just to tell you about my little YouTube journey I know my channels are small compared to a lot of the other the, the big guys and gals out there in the YouTube world but I'm perfectly happy with how it is I really enjoy making the videos and my channel actually started off in the third English lockdown because if you remember Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland had all different lockdowns during the, the height of the pandemic and I was living in Dartmouth at the time and uh, but I, I was still working there I was still going to I remember getting stopped by the police because we weren't allowed to travel I had special documentation from my employer to allow me to drive to work it was all rather strange wasn't it strange days and we were limited into how far we could I think it was we were allowed one exercise period a day I think it was then extended to two it seems such a long time ago now it was only two years ago and it was during that time I, I was exploring more around uh, Dartmouth and I also been watching YouTubers, various YouTubers. Um, I seem to remember watching Cruising Cut the Cut, David Johns. I particularly enjoyed watching the canal ones because they were very relaxing with all the stress that was going on with, with uh, work and also the pandemic. It, it took your mind off it. And I also watched uh, the Narrowboat Experience. Uh, those two lovely, lovely ladies who are no longer on YouTube, they were fantastic. Um, showing their adventures on their narrow boat as well. And what really clinched it for me, I may have mentioned this before, is a lady called Abby Barnes who really, really inspired me to uh, step out and into my YouTube journey. And the reason for that is because she talked a lot about her problems with mental health and how she found it beneficial coming out into the countryside, into places, into exploring places in the countryside, and how that had a positive effect on her mood and I could relate to that because I used to walk along the South Devon coast and I found that very beneficial and she'd been making some films early films pre YouTube when she was um, well probably eight or nine I think she had a little uh, 16 millimeter cine camera was making videos about wildlife stories and then she moved on to video and later onto YouTube and now obviously she's expanded from that uh, 
with her sm Spend More Time in the Wild project. So yes, it, I've got Abby Pons to thank for stepping out and I'd had some money saved up from a share, scape, share save scheme with my employer and I decided to purchase a vlogger's kit, which Canon did. So it literally had everything you needed. So it had your, your selfie stick, your microphone, came with a spare battery, memory card, uh, zoom lens and everything. So I thought, well, that's great. I'll just buy that and I'm ready to go. So that's what I did. I also uh, bought a tripod and a, a rucksack to carry all the bits and pieces uh, with it. So yeah, that's that's how it started. And my very first video, uh, some of you will have probably that, have watched it, but if you're a new subscriber, you probably haven't. It was in the town of Dartmouth and there's lots of videos on the town of Dartmouth, but I decided to approach it differently because there's lots of little alleyways in the town, if you're familiar with the town, with steps on them. And each one seemed to have a little history or story about it. And I researched around that and then just decided to go down there with my camera and film the steps. I did an introduction where I was living. I thought, this is great. I just set it up on the tripod, talking to the camera. I thought, that's fine. And when I got into Dartmouth, that's when the problem started. And I'll tell you more about that later in today's video. The next video to arrive for the month of February on my channel was Lost Railway Walks Part 1. And this was actually inspired by a Christmas present from my daughter, Nicole, who bought me this book published by Collins, which I show in the, that video. So I'm not decided whether there'll be a part two or not yet. It seems to be doing reason, reasonably well. And in that video, I went to the beautiful part of West Gloucestershire known as Simmons Yacht Rock, where you've got that high point and you can look down in the bend of the River Wye, fantastic place to, to uh, start a walk. And I followed the course of the old railway line from Simmons Yacht, where you could see part, we couldn't see the close-up portal of it, part of the tunnel, which bores right underneath the rock there, down to the Welsh town of Monmouth. And you could see bits and pieces along the way. You could see where there was used to be little loops to serve the various quarries. You have to have beautiful views across the River Wye. You can see the rapid bits. And also you had that bouncy bridge, Biblins, Bilblins, something like that, over across the adventure and camping site and the uh, just across the way into nipping over into Herefordshire, in fact. Uh, and then I showed you a little bit around the Monmouth. I know that's outside my area, but I just wanted to, for completion's sake, show you where it went into Monmouth Troy Station. Anyway, I had a top comment from that from a gentleman called Malcolm Richardson who, asked, Richardson, who often writes really brilliant comments on my channel. And I'd just like to read to you now what he put about that particular video. Great walk, Paul, with superb views of the river, the, the Y Valley. What a pity that they closed the line. Were it still open, I'm sure it would have attracted many tourists and, of course, railway buffs. Simmons Yacht is magnificent, but not easy to reach by public transport. When I visited it some 40 years ago, I left the bus and walked down from Goodrich and across Huntsome Bridge. The view from the rock made the walk in the baking heat all worthwhile. That's fantastic, Malcolm. Thank you very much for that comment. Really presents a picture there. So presumably it was uh, the summertime. You caught the bus to, to Goodrich from probably Ross or Monmouth, I suspect, and uh, walked up there. Yeah, because Simmons Yacht really isn't served, served by public transport at all. It, you might get a coach trip there, but that's about about it, really. So you are pretty stuck unless you're arriving by uh, bike or car. So yeah, it'd be great to have that line, wouldn't it? I'd, it? I'd really do think if it was still going today that people would come to there just to have a tour on that line because it, you could go all the way down to after Monmouth, crossing over at Tintern and down to the Welsh town of Chepstone. We've covered part of that uh, previously when we, we I did a previous vlog at Tidenham Tunnel. Yeah, but it's just got, and particularly autumn time with the colours, it would be magnificent. William Fitz Osborne, the the gentleman that had this castle and various other castles, including Chepstow, which is a wonderful castle, well worth exploring too. He was killed in Flanders in 1071, but he had a brother called Roger, Roger Till Brightle. And he took part in what is known as the Revolt of the Earls. And I'll put scroll on the bottom what that was all about. And that happened in 1075, four years after William 
past was was killed, should I say, in uh, in Flanders, sadly. He gave it to another of his supporters, one Randolph de Mortimer. Now, the Mortimer family we've come across before many, many times on the channel. They were a really important and wealthy family through much of the Welsh marches, the far western section of England. Now, Wigmore Castle then became the head of the barons of the Mortimer family. It was later known in 1328 as the Earls of March. In 1155, this castle was actually besieged by King Henry II because of a dispute involving Bridgenorth Castle, somewhere I've actually been to very recently on my trip along the Seven Way. More about that in a sec. But yeah, so we've got this siege. You've got a, the King of England actually coming here to fight and besiege that. It just it's incredible, isn't it, to think it now, the, the, the king of the, the, the country, and he literally was trying to seize it, control of it, because that is how much control or power that the Mortimer family had in this part of the world. Now, later, around the 13th century, a lot of the castle was rebuilt by the Mortimer family. That probably happened when Hugh de Mortimer was given some royal money to invest and so he put it back in to be making this a stronghold once more. And part of that work included the curtain wall, where I've actually just been filming and doing pieces to camera. And I'll just show you a clip of what that looks like now. So that was built around the 13th century. Thankfully and amazingly, it still stands, but obviously you get the sense of how thick the wall is here too. Roger Mortar in 1304 had succeeded his father and he also took control of the castle at Ludlow, as I said, just 10 miles across the border into Shropshire and many castles over the Irish Sea in Ireland too. Now, Roger de Mortimer actually came to a sticky end in 1330. He was executed by one Edward III and all of his lands were then seized by the Crown. Now, Roger de Mortimer confusingly had a son also called Roger Mortimer, and he was killed in action in battle in Ireland in 1398. When the male line of the Mortimers died out in 1424, the castle passed to Richard Plantagenet, 3rd Duke of York, through his mother, Anne Mortimer, sister of the last Roger Mortimer. In the 16th century, this castle was actually managed by what was known as the Council of the Marches and they used it variously as a garrison and also as a prison. And that comes from the records of the nearby Wigmore Abbey, none of which, or don't think much of that uh, currently remains. Later on into the 17th century, of course, you've got the start of the English Civil War, which went on for many years. But before the start of it, or round about the start of it, they actually majoritarily destroyed this castle because they were fearful that it could have been used as a stronghold in these parts. And after that time, it was simply left in ruins. And that's literally what you see here today. It's now in the care, or has been since 1995, in the care of English heritage. And it's free to enter, to explore, enjoy the views from, and also explore the work of Roger de Mortimer and what he did to build the castle back up from the original timber frame structure from William Fitz Osborne. Now these ruins now serve as a brilliant place to rest your back when you're doing pieces to camera. But yeah, just I'm enjoying the views here too. It's a terrific place and it's so quiet as well. Get a little bit of traffic noise from down there, but hopefully that won't uh, distract it too much. Otherwise it's a really peaceful and quiet place to, to, to wander about and as I say, enjoy all the terrific Herefordshire landscape. Now the next video to land on my channel for the month of February was the most viewed video of the entire month and uh, that was no surprise to me because it was one of my canal updates. Canals we're talking about, it's the Cotswold Canals of course, the Stroudwater and Thames and Seven Canals. It was date number 12. Went down really, really well. I think it's something like 1,700 views now because obviously there's lots of work taking place on that canal or canals should I say. I particularly featured in the update the Westfield Locks. Lots of other YouTubers have been down there recently, including Paul and Rebecca Whitewick, who I think went along on when the, uh, the volunteers from the canals were doing some work on it. But they're excavating to uncover that lock once again. I was telling the story about that. And we also had a look at the Roundhouse at Coates, the last one 
not the last roundhouse that's standing, but the last one that I hadn't actually covered in my previous updates. Sadly, that one is in quite a ruin, a bit of a state. It'd be great to see it completely restored again. I had a top comment for that video, and it was from a gentleman called Grant Bain, and I'll just read you what he said. The tunnel in at Coates is a good place to walk to the roundhouse from there. Such a shame, the pub is now closed. There used to be a lovely patch of snowdrops by the roundhouse. The path beyond the railway bridge, and I showed a skew bridge later on in that video, was neglected and overgrown last time I walked it. Great to hear the news about the missing mile. What a brilliant canal restoration project this is. Yes, I heartily agree, Grant, and thank you very much for your brilliant comment. Yes, the volunteers of the Cotswolds Canals Trust, and indeed all the volunteers I come across on my channel, I owe my heartfelt thanks to them because I do, as well as doing canals, of course, and I cover other canals undergoing restoration, uh, particularly the Wilson Barks at the moment and the Somerset Coal Canal, to name but two, also the Herefordshire and Gloucestershire Canal, which we've featured a few times. The railway updates that I do, they featured lots of volunteers as well. Recently, I did a trip to Didcot Railway Centre, more about that in a bit. But yeah, it's the heart of everything to do, and you can see the vision coming together with all that work completing now. And it'd be great, they're saying that we should be able to get it done in the next three or four years to link Stroud in the southern part of the Coldwells back up again to the canal network through Saw Junction from the Gloucester and Sharpness Canal. The next video on my channel for the month of February was the Wiltshire town of Laycock, or village should I say. I actually caught the train to the Wiltshire town of Melksham, had a little tour around there. And I planned to go there, and unfortunately the day I planned to go there when I got up in the morning, it said it was going to be sunny, which it was later, but when I first started it was very, very foggy and misty and very, very cold too. So the open sequence of that, you can see uh, like gas lamps on the bridge with it being very foggy like it was in London in the 1950s. Not that I remember, I'm not quite that old, <laughs> I remember that, but uh, yeah, it gave it an interesting start. And then I walked from Melksham over to Laycock, where as well as the Laycock Abbey, which was known, you could see the outside, but you can also see the gardens. They have the uh, Photography Museum, which was fascinating. Of course, that is one of the places that photography started, and I talk about that in the video. Anyway, I had a top comment from my Laycock video from a lady called Diane Parry, and she writes, a lovely atmosphere beginning to your vlog, talking about the, the fog and the mist, as I, I was saying there. Very interesting visit to Laycock. I have not visited for many years, although I live about 20 minutes away. I love the snowdrops, such a lift and brightness as we start to creep out of winter and into spring. Yes, thank you very much, Diane. Going around that garden, you could see clearly the signs of spring. And now as we're coming to the end of February, we're pretty much landed into spring. Although it doesn't very feel very spring-like today. We're down to about four degrees here in Herefordshire at the moment, but uh, it is starting to brighten up. So I'm hoping to get some better views later on in the video. Now, before I tell you about the next video on the channel, just tell you a little bit more about this interesting village of Wigmer here in Herefordshire. And the notes state that it was one of the first areas of England to be part of the Enclosures Act back in 1772. And this affected the moors and the woods, probably the area surrounding the castle nearby. And there's dividing earth banks still present, not the earth banks for the castle, but dividing earth banks that delineated 
the land and who owned it and who controlled it back in the end or towards the end, mid end of the 18th century. Later on, though, in 1870, it was recorded in the Imperial Gazeta of, I never say that word properly, Gazeta, you know the one I mean, it's like an index, <laughs> of England and Wales, that Wigmore Village was a seat of petty sessions, like a magistrate's court, and that it had a post office, a police station, two Methodist chapels, and a national school of regular fairs held each year too. So it sounds like it was a more substantial village than it is today. Very, very quiet village today. Although I can report it does have a cafe and a village hall as well as a church. Oops, we've got time to I'll probably insert some photographs of the village and the church towards the end of the video today. As we said, there was an abbey at Wigmore. It's about a mile north of the village. And it was founded by Randolph de Mortal, we've already mentioned in the history of the, the, the castle there. And there, many of the Mortimers were buried there, including the ones with the title of the Earls of March. The Abbey continued to flourish until the period of the dissolution of the monasteries, where I've come across that many times before, when it was completely destroyed. As I say, I don't know if there are any remains of it, like rocks or anything, to show where it was. But uh, if I can find a photograph of any remains on the net, I will include that right about now. I don't normally like mentioning celebrities, not celebrity town, I don't go down that road very often, but it is worth mentioning that around in these parts, a gentleman called John Chalice, who was an actor best known for playing Boise in Fools, Only Fools and Horses. Some of you may remember that, some of you are probably uh, too young to remember that series now, which started off, I think it was in the early 1980s. But yes, he lived in this village. I think he ho owned a hall. And as I seem to recall, and I can't find much information on this, but this has all come from a bit of a conjecture. So if you know any more about this, please drop a comment below. Below, I think it was in his family, like in his ancestors, and he bought it and restored it. And it was possibly called Wigmore Hall, but it was certainly in this parish here because it's got recorded he, was, he died in this village parish. He's not actually buried in the church here, but he is buried at the neighbouring village of Luntwardine, which is just a couple of miles away. And while I'm here at this beautiful spot, I'll just mention about numbers five and six that I put up for the month of February. Number five was actually what I call like Canal Update 12A. A little, not to say much too much about this one, but they are currently closed as at the time of recording this, right at the end of the month. I've just seen on Facebook that the towpath from Whitminster roundabout on the A38 in Gloucestershire on the Stradwater Canal, heading out towards Saw Junction, that is currently closed. And the reason for that, well, you'll need to watch that video, but basically they are completely repairing and doing sluice work and gullies along that section, and also to put down a new harder surface on the towpath to make it easier for people to walk along and make it more accessible for people using wheelchairs and prams. So it's a brilliant work being done by the volunteers, but yeah, that's close. And that video explains all about it. I had a, a, a brief comment, quick brief comment, from a gentleman called David Bellani. Now, thank, hi, David. David Bellani lives in Spain and he comments on all of my YouTube videos. Wow, that's a dedication for you. Thank you very much for your support, David. Really appreciate it. And he just writes, thanks for the update, Paul. Nice to see those swans at the start. Yeah, there were some swans going along the, the canal at the start, which kind of, a, they always look photogenic, don't they? Great work being done by all the volunteers. Yeah, they're working so hard on that section. Thank you, David, again, cheers. The next video was the famous mystery person from this Gloucestershire village. Well, I can tell you where the Gloucestershire village was. Well, I won't tell you the famous person because you may not yet see the video. It was at a village called Pulteney, not that far from here, probably about 30 miles in a southwest direction into the Gloucestershire border. And I explained the life about a very famous person who has links to a pantomime. There was a clue. And I told you the story of his life and how he came from that village and how he, he ended up in London doing lots of good works there. More clues there. But if you yeah, haven't seen it, it's worth a watch because I didn't know half of the things about his life, which I 
uncovered and researched and tell you the story about that in the video. I had a really nice comment from Alice Goss, who is a fellow YouTuber. Well worth checking out Alice's channel, by the way. She often goes on trips into Europe at the weekend and will go around places in Portugal and Italy. Yeah, go and check out her channel, it's brilliant. She gives some fantastic stores of lots of really picturesque European histories and tells you the history of them. She writes, this is why I love the church history. DW himself, there's another clue. A lineage with the name. I found his former house and grave in London the other year. Wow, that's brilliant. I say he's got lots of connections to London as you'll see in the video. Let's spare a thought for poor old Alice. Now, as Alice was uh, the gentleman celebrity from Pulteney, it was his wife who sadly passed away quite early on. But yeah, thanks Alice. And as I say, Alice's uh, Goss channel is put, uh, well worth checking out. I'll put a link to her channel in the description of today's video. This is a very impressive section of the remains here because you can see where the moat would have originally been dug out here. Also it needed some water inside it. Also, you've got the thickness, the walls there, what remains of the original castle built by the Mortimer family in the 1300s. Now, earlier on, when I was saying about my first video that I was making in Dartmouth, I said that I bought the vlogging kit. I did the introduction while I lived indoors, which is easy to do. Got out there, put my wide angle lens on, set it up, microphone on the top, selfie stick underneath, Back to my first piece of camera. Press record. <gasps> I froze. There were people around me. There was people walking up and down the steps. There was people bustling around in the town. And I'm thinking, what do I do? They're going to see me talking to a camera. And that very, very first video, I was so nervous. In fact, if you go back and watch it, it looks quite rudimentary now because as you go on with YouTube, your presenting skills, you just learn. It's, it's not, you can't learn it from a book. You just learn to do it. The more you do it, obviously with the editing as well, you learn, the more you do the editing, you improve on it. But yeah, if you watch that first video, the very first piece the camera I do out in the streets of Dartmouth near the top of one of those steps, you can see how nervous I was. I really, really felt very nervous. But I thought, well, I've just got to do it. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to make videos. And I want to film in these lovely places here in the West Country. I'm going to have to just do it. So that's what I did. And I've been doing it ever since. And it's really weird because there are places like here today where it's nice and quiet. There was just a lady that came up to me walking a dog. I gave her a business card and I was happily talking to her about YouTube. And there's other places which are really busy, like Bath, when I finished the Cotswold Way, where there were so many other people there talking into cameras and phones and stuff. Nobody took a blind bit of notice because it was full of tourists. You have those weird middle ground places which aren't really quiet. They're not really busy but there's just a few people around. But as soon as you bring a camera, even if it's just, you're just taking pictures, people think, what's he taking pictures of? What's he doing? Why is he setting up a tripod? Why is he talking into that camera? And you get people looking at you. And you, sometimes it does dent your confidence a little bit, but uh, places like this are uh, great. I feel a lot more relaxed talking to the camera now and it has brought up my confidence uh, doing YouTube. But uh, again, thanks very much for your support over the past two years. Just in this section here, you get a sense how thick these walls will be. The Mortimer family didn't have any expense spared when constructing this to protect the fortifications from any attack down there below. Now, last Saturday, I went along to Stroud Station, the southern part of the Cotswolds, not that far from where I live, to do a one-off event. It was to film a steam train going through as Cotswold Explorer. Normally what happens is they go to Worcester Shrub Hill via the Cotswold Line and back via what's called the Golden Valley Line between Gloucester and Swindon, making their way back to Paddington. There had been a landslip around Hanborough between Morton and Marsh and Oxford, and it meant that that line was closed, so it had to go up and down via the Golden Valley Line. So I went along there to Stroud. It was a no commentary video, it didn't actually appear in the video. I just shot some scenes before the steam train arrived and the crowds gathering and the steam train going through. The steam train is called Sierra Leone after the country, 
Um, and it's a bit strange because it actually used to be called, I think it was Atlanta, before that it was called Galatea. It's all the same locomotive. Really impressive seeing steam trains on the main line and normally obviously to film them at the preserve lines. But uh, there was a top comment for that video. And it was from Louise from Southwest Sundays. If you haven't already checked out Louise's channel, highly recommend you do so. Like myself, she covers all of the Southwest. She's based around the Somerset area, but she does Devon and Cornwall and Dorset too. So well worth checking out her comment. And she writes, felt like I was standing there on the platform in anticipation and then enjoying the steam train approaching and stopping in the station amongst the crowds. It drew a large cr crowd. It certainly did. It was delightful there to see families with young children and they, you could see the anticipation and excitement in the young children's faces as they saw the steam train. But not just young children, there were older people there as well. Real, real train enthusiasts with their cameras set up too. So it was great to see. I really enjoyed that. The next video was Cotswold Walks number four. 14, should I say, number four. Yeah, I've done 14 now. Uh, well, actually, I haven't. It, there isn't number 13. When I do updates and walks and stuff, I don't feature, yeah, I'm superstitious, I know. It's a bit sad, I know. But then we won't see number 13. But uh, yes, yeah, so Kemerton and Overbreen, Worcestershire part of the Cotswolds around Breeden Hill. Beautiful village, as I'd never been to either of them before very well maintained villages and I went up to, not quite to the top of Breeden Hill, I originally planned to but I went across a little track called the Belt and film there. Had trouble because it was very very windy but in hindsight when I was editing it you can actually hear the wind noise and it sounds like that it gives it atmosphere. Again I had a top comment on that video and it's from a gentleman called John Sparks. Hi John. He writes, looks a great area for landscape photography which I enjoy. I must take a trip there as it's not f too far from where I live. Yes, I think it's a much lesser known part of the Cotswolds, but it's also very close to larger centres of population like Gloucester, Worcester and Cheltenham. So it's not too far away from the M5 junction, eight or nine would be the nearest ones. I can highly recommend, so if you ever come to this part of the world, uh, yes, yeah, get yourself over to Kemerton and Overbury has a cracking coffee shop in Kemerton too. My last video this month was Didcot in Steam. It was a return to the Didcot Railway Centre and this time they had a steam day there because my previous visit, it was just to have a look at the various museums and the layout of the site. Terrific day there. It's so easy to get to on the train as well because it's right next to Didcot Parkway Station. It was great seeing the steam train run up and I also managed to get a shot entering what's called the transfer shed where you've got the broad gauge tracks as well from the front of a GWR rail car. Really enjoyed that and I'd like to thank all of the volunteers of the Didcot Railway Centre for the help in making of that video too. Delightful day there. Had a talk comment, it's from David Bellani again. You got two mentions of this this month, David. The effort these volunteer groups make to recreate these sets of wagons is really admirable and they really add to the atmosphere of the railways. Also impressive, is the lion's head canopy support for her, the, the station, which is going to be recreated on that, that side there. Yeah, it was amazing to see that uh, uh, lion's head there. It was at uh, Hayford, wasn't it? Hayford Station originally. Most, David goes on to write, most of Spain's railways were built in a broad gauge, which I, I didn't realise that, but modern high-speed lines are being built to standard gauge, making seamless trans-euro travel, rail travel, possibility. Yeah, that's great. I always think that uh, broad gauge lost out a little bit unfairly because it seems to be a bit of a better technology. So you've got wider carriages and I think it gave a better ride as well. But of course, standard gauge won out and Brunel had to change all of the tracks on the GWR line. That was all the videos I had for February. If you watched any of my videos during the course of the month, I really, really do appreciate it. Thanks very much. And I really appreciate too if you share the videos. I know some of you do that and share on Facebook with, and a couple of you have shared them on Instagram, which extends the, the audience that uh, see my little videos around the West Country and the West Midlands, which is where we are today in the Northern extreme of the area that I cover. Before I go today, a couple of other things I'd like to mention. I've had a couple of emails from YouTube recently, apart from the aforementioned uh, two years uh, anniversary of being on YouTube. I had an email saying that I've had, uh, I was just checking because I couldn't remember the exact figure, 20,000 hours of watch time. So in other words, people have watched my videos for 25,000 
20,000 hours. I find that a mind-boggling concept over the, the, the two-year period. So thank you for your contribution to that. Uh, now passed over the 1,400 subscriber mark. I think it's around 1,415 time recording. So if you've subscribed to the channel, I really appreciate that too. So thanks very much for that. And I've also now passed over the 150,000 views mark as well, which is of, in total number of people of any one time have clicked on my video to watch it either in full or in part. So yeah, that, I was really pleased with that as well. So thanks if you've, as I say, watched any of that. And I do thank you very much for watching my videos today. Before I go, just gonna mention what's happening coming up. Yesterday before yesterday, not today, yesterday, day before yesterday, it's been a very busy few days. I was up in, not this uh, far from this part of the world actually, I was doing the Seven Way Part 12. I caught the train to Telford, long hike to the bus station in Telford. I'll tell you more about that in the video. And uh, I then caught the bus to Ironbridge and walked to Bridgemorth and exploring loads of things on the way, including uh, Coalport and Tar Tunnel and the Coalport Bridge and some wonderful recreated old railway stations on that. So that's, that's all in the can, I just need to edit it. I may get it done the next day or two. If not, because I've got some business to attend to in Cornwall, it will probably be over about four or five days' time, but it will be landing soon. And I hope to do part 14, yeah, so no 13, part 14 of the Seven Way, uh, also in March. So that'll be extending down to Arley from the town of Bridge North. Didn't have time to include too much of Bridge North in that video, but I'll be including a lot more of it in part 14 of the Seven Way. And it was great to be back walking alongside Sabrina again too. There'll be a Wilson Barks one coming up. I was hoping to do it in the month, but it didn't quite uh, didn't quite happen, unfortunately. But yeah, that'll be happening soon. To, uh, Wooden, not Wooden Bassett. No, I done Wooden Bassett. That's wrong, isn't it? Abington on Thames in Oxfordshire. So that'll be happening. And I hope to revisit the Somerset Coal Canal. I also hope to do a city in the West Country Wanderings region. Haven't decided. I don't normally do urban, do I? But uh, haven't decided which one yet. So it, from take a pick. It could be Truro. Could be Wells, could be Salisbury, could be Plymouth, any of those. So one of those will be landing on the channel in March. So uh, so look look out for that. There will be a railway series one. There'll also be a couple of videos from both the Cornwall and Devon area, which didn't actually happen in the month of February. February is a shorter month, and it was just logistically wasn't going to happen. So there'll be something from uh, one, if not both of those counties coming up. And I said the aforementioned walk along the Jurassic Coast on the south coast of. Uh, Devon near the town of Exmouth that'll be coming up too soon so thanks very much for that thanks for your support during the February and thanks for all your support over the past two years it's been an absolute blast I've really really enjoyed it we'll be continuing here on West Country Wanderings thanks very much for watching today take care of yourselves look after yourselves and I hope to see you on the channel again very very soon all the best for now bye bye